Hi friends, welcome and welcome to a new room in my house. It's super aesthetic, so I'm glad you're here. I shot this video last month and am just now getting around to going ahead and editing it. You saw me stitch my little cat friend last week. Well, this week all of the friends are stitched together and they are just needing to be painted. This tapestry video is going to be cut up into two videos. This one today of me painting and then the one for next week that will hopefully get uploaded and that one is me actually stitching everything together. I could have whittled this one down and gotten it put together um, but unfortunately I still have the actual tube of the back of the tapestry to sew and my customer is such a delight and not in a rush at all to get this piece <laughs> that I've just been putting it off and putting it off and I need to get that done because one day she's going to be like can you meet me tomorrow and I'll be like absolutely and then I have to just rush it out but it's all done except for that tube, that tube and hopefully that'll be done by next week and you'll get to see it all put together but without further ado let's get into it okay so we have changed up our situation a little bit for this one because these are different kinds of paints um i got there's a lady on tiktok who does these um embroideries and then does them with watercolors and these are the ones that she uses and so it's just uh dr ph martin bombay india india ink um so, and then she puts, uses this textile medium in there. Um, her, she goes by Haby Fab. And she has a whole website in habyfab.com and stuff where she sells her own. But um, Haby Fab is where I got the idea of the, of, well, basically all of this. I was already embroidering, but um, I saw that she was watercoloring it and it looked so much nicer. That's where this came from. I tried to paint on top of this cookie, like this cooling rack, um, that way it could like drip down, but then it, you were, I was contending with these ridges and that was irritating. So that's not what we're going to be using. I start by wetting the area with just a, just a, a brush with water on it. And I try to keep the actual platter itself dry. And then I just go in with some different watercolors. And what I was going for was like a mossy feel. I wanted to look like the bottom of like a forest floor or um, because it's the theme is Enchanted Forest. It came out more camo-y than I would have liked for it to be. But I didn't really know what I was doing. I was just experimenting. Here I am putting some water in the paints trying to make them more spreadable don't do this kids it doesn't work it makes them more spreadable but then I think that's why my colors were coming out so washed out is because of how much water I had in the paints because they they're pretty vibrant while I am I'm painting but then whenever I actually when it actually ends up drying I ended up having to go through this like three or four times going on top of it which each time that I went through it and put more on there on top, it got more and more camo looking and less like the moss. The first time it went, I went through on this and um, the first time that I went through on my first go around, it looked good. I looked kind of mossy and whatnot, but then by time I had all those different layers on there, it really just looked um, like camo. It's really kind of funny that I started off with this cat one because it was, it was my least favorite and probably the easiest one to stitch in the first place. And so I started off with that one thinking that if I mess it up too bad that I could go ahead and just restitch it or something but it turned out looking the best out of all what five that I did the first one that I painted ended up looking the, the 
best. There's a little bit of bleed out at the top of the hat where the purple is, which you, there's no purple yet now, but there's a little bit of bleed out at the very top of the hat and I think it adds character. The technique that I end up employing here is I go in with just all the different colors and then uh, go in with this blue, big blue brush and, and it's just a wet brush and I go in and just, uh, I just blend everything together. is the little lizard friend holding a little stuffed animal of himself and the lizard friend actually had a tail and the tail had like some uh lines on it like a kind of like a zebra line zebra stripes and whatnot i hated it it looked ugly and it kind of looked like a kind of like a bug and so i ended up just taking that away and curving that cape these are of my own design. All of these I got off of uh, Redbubble and ended up taking the design and putting it into Photoshop and then turning it into what I wanted to stitch. So they are not my own design but they are modified by me which eases my conscience a little bit. These paints are, I told you what they are in the beginning of it, but I have to have something to play with. I have to have something in my hand. But, and this is, it's just a hair curler, which I have clearly not used today. But, so, what I do is I take the paint and I put them in the little paint caddy. And then I go and I put some of the liquid that white, that white stuff that's in the upper right hand corner. It's, um, it's like texture or what is that called? It's in the next room, but I'm not going to get it. Um, but it basically just turns the paint into fabric paint. So it just turns the watercolor into fabric paint, which I don't, these aren't really watercolors. These are ink. They're water-based ink which I, I guess is is what watercolor is, but um, you can actually use these for fountain pens, which is nice because I do, um, I do like writing with, why is that not? There we go. I've got several of these in here that I, because I do use fountain pens. So that'd be neat that I can use these paints as well for my writing. When I write letters to people, I like to use fountain pens. And I used to write, because I like to write stories, I used to um, use my fountain pens to write the stories because uh, it's just so much smoother than writing with a ballpoint pen. And you don't have, you don't like, you run out of ink, but you know when you run out of ink, you just fill it back up. But you don't have to like circle and circle and circle like you do with a ball point, ball point pen. You know when you're going to run out of pink ink and there's not as much clogging going on, especially if you take care of the pens. But now, I and I used to also use it for when I worked at the casino, when I worked at the casino, because I wasn't having to just pick up a pen and write real fast like I do now that I answer phones. I was so, okay, so the lady that asked me to make this, she told me to do, that she wanted it to be Enchanted Forest. And I was like, oh, okay, just like, 
like some witches there's like some more of these witchy characters she goes oh yeah and like some maybe like some mushrooms or like a uh like a no gnomes and stuff like that i was like oh, gnomes yes okay and then I was 100% on board with this project. I was so excited to get to stitch a gnome, which I've stitched a gnome before. I've stitched the gnome from uh, from Gravity Falls. And he's got like a little bottle in his hand and he's like got it kicking his feet up in the air. And I hated that because I put it on this really tightly woven fabric and I doubled it over instead of using, which I could have, I didn't even have to use, use uh, fabric stiffener on that one or a stable like fabric stabilizer but I just folded that over twice well then every time that I would put my needle through the fabric it would uh, it was like nails on chalkboard squeak and it hurt my teeth just working on that project so it's still it's up on this bookshelf behind us or behind you not behind me I'm, anyway it's behind you and I haven't even washed off the stabilizer yet because I it just makes me so mad and it's just on a piece of scrap blue paper and honestly what it needs to be done it paper scrap blue scrap blue fabric but honestly what needs to be done is it needs to be thread painted and then it'd be finished but I'm not thread painting that because that's just extra um that's just extra needle pushing through and I'm not I'm not into that it's it's a bad time and I don't it's not since it's a blue fabric it's not going to take the dye very well this guy i liked him too and from the minute i saw him because i print these off in black and white and i work with them in photoshop in black and white so the only time that i actually see the color is when i'm going through ooh, excuse me going through and actually choosing my the the designs but i don't really pay attention to them and so whenever i print them off or i'm manipulating them in photoshop um my own colors come to mind and the only one that that's the only time that that is not true is with this boa constrictor right here this boa constrictor was yellow and he was very yellow and he was as yellow as that, that sunflower yellow like that sunflower but i don't know enough about snakes i didn't know if i could make him a different color and it still be believable but i mean i it's a enchanted forest so i guess we're not really going for believable not to mention he has a cape and a hat on but so I ended up making him yellow as long as well as that sunflower and I really hate that he is yellow but the other one the the snail with the pie I was so excited to get to st to color that one because I wanted that bubble in the cauldron to be a very bright and vibrant green neon green and I think I did a very good job with that I was so happy with the way that that turned out So now we are going we are going in and painting the cat. If you'll notice right here, these part this part right here of the the hat on the cat, the hat on the cat, um, is not painted. I went over with all of the characters and painted them white and that I was actually gonna go over and paint that way it got minimized the bleeding that the background did. I shouldn't have done that. Don't do that, kids, either. That was a mistake. I should have just went ahead and painted over it, and it would have been fine. It didn't need that white. It just makes it uh, harder and more plasticky, kind of like when you get like a cheap plastic or a cheap shirt, and that when they've put lots and lots of screens of paint on it, and then you hold it out like this, and you can't even do this. It's just stiff. That's kind of what this was on the way to doing and it was pretty stiff but these this part right here i do eventually go in and paint after i had sent the finished product to my friend to see how she thought what she thought it looked how she thought it looked and she was like it looks really great and i hate to have to tell you this but what's going on with with the hat right here above the cat's head is that supposed to be blank and i was like oh my gosh the logic there there was no logic there so I had to go in and fix that. So 
So right here, you can immediately, right there at the top of the, the, the tip of the hat, you can see that little blowout that is happening. And that just stayed there the whole time. I could have actually gone in and put some moss, like embroidered some moss at the top, but I, it's so minimum, minimal. I don't, I, I had much bigger problems going on with this project. This project was both a delight to work on and the nightmare for, or, and the project from hell. I, it's my first, and I, I hesitate to say this because it was, not at all the customer's fault because she was a delight to work with and she kept telling me i kept t giving her times so i was like well it'll be done by in two weeks and she goes well don't even worry about it the baby's not here don't it, i want this to be fun for you and i was like oh well of course it's gonna be fun for me and then i made it not fun for me the stitching and stuff was super fun for me it was the painting that i stressed out about it was just because i was working i'm new to painting anyway and also I was working with this new, this new paint and boy, did it have a learning curve. And I did try it out on a test swatch beforehand and it just didn't, didn't work out the way that it needed to work out. It was a delight to work on because I do I, and I am going to end up making another tapestry. I think this this was a super fun s way to incorporate all of my newly found skills in the past couple years. Of because I started off my sewing kicked off with wanting to quilt. I decided one day that that's what I wanted to do, and I did so much research and went on YouTube, went on different blogs and different things like that to see exactly what you needed to do to quilt and I was planning on just doing it with my just do hand quilting but my uh my grandmother's friend uh got a new sewing machine and um and asked my grandma if I wanted it and my grandma was like yes like she's been talking about getting into sewing and stuff and sewing and quilting so yeah she would love it and so I got that that sewing machine and my grandma was like don't touch it just keep it I'm giving it to you and don't touch anything until I get you enrolled in some classes and that will teach you how to uh, work your sewing machine and so I was working nights at the time I was working from midnight to 8 a.m. and it was just hard for us oh pause story this right here was a bad idea this putting the water around the hat and then trying to paint that in, that ends up causing blowout in the end, at the end and causes lots of stress. But, so she gave me the, my, my sewing machine and told me not to touch it. Well, I couldn't get into any classes, so I just went onto YouTube one day and learned how to thread the machine, learned how to work the machine, and just started stitching from there and then ended up making my, my first quilt. And I just fell in love with it and started going from there. So this project incorporates quilting because I, quilting, piecing together things. I'm not actually, because I didn't actually quilt anyway. I ended up, I was, thought I was going to just do a stitch in the ditch where you just stitch in the ditch in the seam of the squares where you you piece them together and quilt that together but I it's such a little project I didn't want that to show up on the back so I didn't end up doing that and just ended up going and hand tacking in between the pieces here is video evidence that I don't know what a mushroom looks like I didn't I just started went in with the red and about here I'm like Oh my gosh, that's not, it's, it's backwards. And so then I go in and draw in the white circles and then just fill in the red, which ended up being fine, except for there was extreme blowout up there in the top right hand corner, up there by the little frog, and it actually goes into the frog's toe beans, which I circled those little toe beans. Those little tiny circles are hard to embroider anyway, but if it's a big circle, it's not that big of a deal. 
But those little tiny toe beans, those, those were awful to have to do. Here is a prime example of why I shouldn't have put that white on those things, like that mushroom, because here is that same exact color red, and it's vibrant and beautiful on that gnome's hat and shirt, and it is just pink on the on that mushroom when it needed to be a bright red as well. I am so lucky to have my first customer, my first customer be this lady that. I have because she is so understanding and I was so worried the entire time about just disappointing her not that she not worried that she would be upset with me or that she would scream or d say that she wants her money back or anything like that I was just so worried that she was going to be disappointed in what she was getting and just because I was it was a new project but she like I said, I was just so lucky with her because she, she knew that this was a new project. She wasn't looking for something that was going to be perfect. She was looking for something that looked homemade, but hopefully, well, it looks pretty homemade, but she really seems to, really, and seems to enjoy it. And everybody that's seen the, the end result has been very nice to me and told me that they like it, but I, I've spent too much time working on this project to see anything except for the mistakes that I've seen, which is, it's not bad, I don't think. I think that that's really good that I, I have tried this. I have went out and done this and it was something that somebody wanted. And so then I had reason to finish it because, oh boy, I don't know. There were, there were touch and go places. But I did learn, this project, I learned so much, and so much about stress levels, too. I did this whole project while being very sick. Um, for I, this project I did the, for the month of, in the month of July, it was basically what it spanned. And the month of July was not a good time for me. So, and you can hear it in the little bits of this video that you can hear me whenever I am explaining things, you can hear in my voice how, just how bad I feel. I like this boa, well, I like bits of this boa constrictor. Um, parts of it, I like the, the inside of the sunflower are actually little tiny French knots. And I think that that adds a great bit of texture and looks really nice. And then it's bow tie is just some long and short stitches, which adds a different point of texture in it. The yellows that I have here, I actually mixed these up and they are wildly different in the little containers. But then whenever I put them next to each other, they don't, they look the same, but they are different. And they even take on more, they, they, they look different once they're on that white versus on that fabric. But I promise you, I only use the yellow that I mixed up for the flower on the flower and the yellow I used, yellow that I mixed up for the boa on the boa, but that looks the same. I had a really hard time with the boa painting him and even stitching him because I didn't understand where the, because he's got that little knot where he's all twisted up in the center and I didn't know what part went to what. I didn't know if it was all all snake there or if it was uh, snake in the background. Eventually I just decided it was all snake and ended up painting it that way. But this one I did have to keep going back and referencing the picture because I couldn't figure it out. My signature I guess in my art is that I don't like putting pupils in my characters, which this isn't my art. I stole this art, but whenever I stitch it and turn it into my art, I don't put pupils in 
them. I take the pupils out. That's for a couple reasons. Um, mostly because I can't seem to stitch a good pupil. It just looks better without the without a pupil. And two, I think it's really cute. It makes me think of every time I stitch something with eyeballs or something, it makes me think of Rick and Morty, how their signature is. There's like the scribbles for the, the pupil. My friend Amanda thinks that it's super creepy and she hates it. She wants them to have people. She said that it looks a little demonic. But I think that, I think they still read as cute without the, the pupils. Another part that I struggled on was trying to figure out what part of this was the cape of the snake and what part was the, uh, what part was the actual snake where the cape stopped like that part up there by the the hat I had a heck of a time trying to figure out if that was cape or not and here's our little our little snail friend again if you notice they all have purple and purple capes and hats and then all the ribbon that gets tied here and that goes around here is all black so they are all matching so that they they seem to go so it's more con cohesive something about this kettle just makes me so happy I, I don't know why it just makes me happy I think it's adorable and then the colors that I and because I ended up mixing the colors for the snail and the snails shell I think are chef kiss beautiful See, you can see the blowout behind him right here where I should have done, gone back in. And once it dries, it, it's there because it's got that uh, medium in it, that fabric medium. Next time, I'm going to go with what my gut told me to do in the first place, which was don't mix it straight into the paint. Just put a thin layer of it over top of everything when you're done. Think that would help because then I can move that I should be able to move that paint around a little bit more with just water here's that beautiful green I believe that's green straight out of the the paint can it had it right and see this is I just think that this is just perfect for his shell it's really pretty And I did the same thing I did with the boa constrictor here is that I made it kind of the same. In fact, I think that this was, came from that leftover paint that I had. But it's about the same color, but this reads a little bit better, I think. Uh, the, you can tell that they're different colors, but they're very similar. I am very proud of that job. I think I did a great job there. Oh, and this, this color was an accident. I had a little bit of that yellow still left in my brush and I wanted it to go all the way across the mushroom because I loved this color, but I didn't have enough there. So then I ended up having to uh, wing it. I ended up getting still a beautiful color of eggshell and then went it in with just pure white up there at the top of the mushroom to kind of distinguish it. I was very excited to get to paint the the lantern itself. And there you can see I got that blowout again and I end up going over that and up there at the top with white paint thinking that I could fix correct it that way and go in with the background colors but it wouldn't soak up. So I get creative with it. I feel like this whole video is just going to be me bragging about my my color mixing skills but look at that beautiful peach skin tone that I mixed up I'm so proud of that I 
don't know any kind of color theory. I don't know any kind of anything besides red and blue make purple and that's recent knowledge. So for me to be able to see and mix these colors is a feat in of itself. But that, that skin tone, man, I could, I could wear it as a foundation. I think this gnome turned out really well too. He had a lot and lots of stuff going on in his beard and he had more things, I think going, he had like a belt buckle but I think, and then he actually had fingers. I took those out. But I like it with the less strands in his beard. I think it looks really nice. See, so here I go with the paint, the white, trying to fill that in. And it's just a mistake. Okay, so here I try to clean up this area by putting some white over the red and ended and then I was going to go over it with the other colors to kind of blend it out and that didn't happen. So now I am have decided that I'm going to add some moss up here and then I'm also going to have to add some moss onto his his little lantern here and by his boot. And over here is the only other place that I did it and I don't know what I'm going to put here. Maybe some bubbles or something up there but what I'm doing is by adding moss I am just going in and with some embroidery thread and just one two three just doing a French oh a French knot with two pieces of string one two three I want to tie in the fact that I'm putting moss on these so these other guys need some texture on them too. This guy I probably won't have to touch up since he's already got texture on there. This guy I'm gonna have to do something about that blowout anyway so maybe I can do incorporate some kind of texture in there and then this guy will have texture on him. I had also originally thought about putting some fireflies in the back to make it look more enchanted, but I don't know if I need to necessarily do that because of the camo nature that it ended up looking like. I thought that the way to do this was to do the background first and then do the characters. I am now learning that that's probably not the best way because I thought that would be the best way to avoid blowout from these guys and then this back into it, you know, but I think that it's better for me to paint these guys and then go in and do the background. Now this guy, he still has, even though I went in and tried to fix him, uh, still has this around and I keep thinking that since he's got his little lantern there that maybe, you can't even tell because it's in the hoop, but go around and do um, some yellow around him to uh, make it look like he's like carrying the lantern and there's light. Tell me in the comments if you think that's a good idea. It'll probably be too late by time. I post this, but I'd like to know what you think about that as a potential idea. This here is just from where it creased whenever I was painting. And so I first got this really big line and I hate it so much. So I talked to my brother last night and he was giving me some ideas and his idea was to have this turn into a river. But the problem with that is that since this is already painted and we have learned from the white paint that painting isn't, painting it a different color isn't gonna be great. I think I can still paint this brown because there is brown in here. At least I'm gonna try anyway. If not, I'll just have to long and short stitch it. Anyway, my idea was to turn it into a log These pictures that you're fixing to see are from my brother and you can see how he has drawn out what I had and then drawn things to cover up the stains that I that I put on there, those white stains and just different creative ways that I could go and embroider. I ended up, the only one that I ended up going with was the, the log because, and that was my idea anyway. 
because <laughs> he's not here to come and draw them onto my fabric for me and that was the only way that I could I could think to do was ended up just going in and putting moss on there. I think it turns out really well because it turn it puts more texture into it. That log, I'm so proud of that log. I think it is gorgeous. Here is what I was talking about, the moss. Here's the, mo the moss that adds texture that I really like. I end up putting it up there on the gnome's feet as well and on that lantern and on his hat. I'm super proud of this log. I think it turned out really well, <laughs> especially for me freehanding it. I did use the reference that Bryce had drawn out, my brother, and I believe I went in and embroidered those lines too. The tapestry is behind you guys, but of course I can't reach it. But I think that really, which I was wanting for this project, I wanted to have just a little thing in the middle and then have those quilts together. That's what I wanted. But I do like that that log is there and adds a little bit more. And then here you see me going ahead and filling in that that cat's hat <laughs> where Amanda told me that that was illogical. Okay, so I haven't turned on the camera in a while because I've been so frustrated, but so I've got these stains, or these different, the dog's are breaking because the mailman just drove by. But this, which I guess kind of looked cool if that's what I was aiming for. I was not aiming for that. And none of the other ones looked like that, except for this one, which we had embroidered over to save it from that. So, <sighs> what we are doing is I went ahead and got hot, because the way that I did this I guess is I got hot water and painted on this and then I took this brush and just took it and then just blended it like that after I put the paint on there and bad things happened apparently or good things depending on how you look at it and so I decided to do the same exact thing with these guys and hope that they turn out a little bit better. You can't even tell because this is how it looked like. This is what it looked like last time, or with this one, before it dried completely. And then when it dried completely, it was wrong. I <laughs> I don't know what I did differently to get that to go. Um, I really liked it looking like this. I thought it looked great, but I have sat here and thought about it and thought about it and I'm not redoing this guy because I've already done so much work with the moss and um, these little tiny toe beans in general so let's hope these let's cross our fingers and hope that this works out so much for watching and I hope that you enjoyed the learning experience that I went through while making this. I like I said in the video I really I really really like this project. I think that it is really whimsical and exciting that it it's bringing all of my newfound hobbies together and it turned out pretty okay especially for me learning as I go but it was it was also dreadfully frustrating and that's unfortunate because the lady that I was in making this for was very adamant on trying to make this as easy of, as a project as she possibly can and she was I just would I just hope all of my my customers are as easygoing and delightful to work with as she is
So join me next week and see me put it all together, which putting it all together was so much easier because I already knew what I was doing and I wasn't having to learn as I go. So it's much faster and easier. And in fact, a lot of the times I even forgot to pick up the camera because it was just so natural to just keep going. And that's part of the reason why I haven't been able to make the tube because I, I just know that whenever I go in there, I need to pick up the camera and do it on camera. And I'm just lazy. It's just lazy. It's all there is to it. But thank you again for watching and come back next week to see it but all together and see it in all its glory. Bye.